What's up, everybody? I am Sniggenhoff, and uh, quit, don't quit, noodles, don't noodles. We're playing Manchu today, and in the last episode, we kind of solidified our position after conquering some land from Korea. One thing I may do in the future, but well, definitely will do in the future, I should say, is go to war with Korchin. I kind of want to wait to see if these Korchin Separatists can do anything so that we could grab that land as well. That's probably too much to ask. I mean, the Ming has so many troops over here. Um, and we're not rivaled to Korchin anymore, correct? We're not. How many troops do they have? Military, not rivals. Positive opinion of us. Korchin has 4,000 troops. They do have a lot of devastation. Someday I will bind this map mode. I mean, three point, eh, not too much. I mean, there's it's like 20% up over here, but like it's only 3% down here, and this is actually not devastated at all. Our, our land is slowly ticking back. Uh, the Korean lands have mostly regained it because of the fort over here. That actually, that makes forts um, especially forts you conquer, a lot more useful. I really like that feature of letting forts tick down your um, your devastation. So, I, I mean, I could literally declare this war today. They have 4,000 troops right here. I should probably, if I wanted to declare it, I should probably up my army maintenance. Um, I would end up taking out a loan. Or I could debase my currency, but I don't think I want to do that right now. Um, I don't need this fort on anymore, so we can turn it off. I'm going to keep it, especially if I, if and when I go back to war with Korea. It'll be useful in um, having at least this province's uh, devastation ticked down. And then there's a fort here, so these provinces will all be affected by that. Um, that may be something I like think about as I conquer land. Like, I want land, I want a fort and then land around that fort. So let's wait a few months. And we'll go to war with Korchin. Seems fine. Uh, we do have the tribes down over here taking up in a rebellion, but um, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Also, we can continue to develop over here to one get the uh, get the third development province, and two develop the Renaissance into our territory. So let's go ahead and, yeah, there's our loan. I'm going to push this button a few more times. We're getting a lot closer. And possibly once I win this war and raise a bunch of territory, I'll be able to get it even closer than that. Um, conquest is 100% aggressive expansion, 100% prestige, and 100% cost. Tribal Feud is less aggressive expansion, so let's go Tribal Feud over Boduna. Is there a fort here? There's a fort here. Let's go Tribal Feud over Sartu. And just get after it. Stack Wipe, uh, Detach Siege, come up here, and then I'm just gonna split everybody up and go siege down the whole country. Our king is now malevolent, so liberty, and des liberty, desire, and subjects will go up by point plus five. If we have a subject, we currently don't. Uh, just split everything up. Get another point nine to go with him there. Unfortunately, all this land that I take will likely have to be territories. Because I just, I have barely any room for states, and almost all this land is going to be kind of crappy anyway.
uh, tribal feud. During the height of the summer fe festiv festivities in our capital, members of two feuding tribes have decided to have a public showdown and fight it out in front of the entire political and religious leadership of our state. The ensuing violence was so fierce that not only the feuding tribesmen lost their lives, but countless bystanders and even members of the cons guard. Wonderful. Vile rabble. We lose two prestige, one, one stability, and the tribes lose ten loyalty. Great. Um, and I don't have the... I do not currently have the admin power to bump that stability back up. I'm gonna hire an admin advisor for a little while. Um, I do need more admin. I, I eventually do want to actually get to uh, admin tech five. Probably be a good idea and um, is they're gonna want admin power all right we won that they hired like a bunch of little troops up here so I ended up with a, in a bunch of little skirmishes. Um, these provinces may go to Korchin. Ming is having some issues with their rebels. Yeah, they're going to take care of it right now. Um, I believe I have... Nope, that's not set on loot. Did I ever set up the loot map mode? Yes, I did. It's on trade. Ooh, there's some loot to be had out here. No loot to be had here. Um, I mean, when I raise these, I will get the full loot bar, but some of these may be at low, as low development as they can get, so I won't get to loot those through raising. National fragmentation, although, comp comp although comprising a vast area, Manchu is politically a rather shattered nation. Kung San's power over the empire has been severely limited by various local rulers, and he is faced with increasing difficulty in ma administrating the large empire. The disparate mix of culture groups with different values and beliefs has resulted in conflicts erupting over the most insignificant matters. We can increase our centraliz centralization efforts, lose 25 ducats, or leave it as it is and lose one stab. I'll lose the ducats. Um, definitely 25 ducats is worth 100 admin power. Siege is over. take everything Yaren will want will be very angry at me, but what are they even going to do? Let's hope uh, the peace treaty actually goes through this time and doesn't not go through. Can't take anything else. Seems fine. Let's raise everything we can. This can't be raised again until 1470. Somebody already raised it. Likely Korchin when they conquered it from Barashia. There we go. Not that button. Almost enough admin to do that all. I probably spent a little too much admin on development over here. Um, 
Let's use our military first again. And Diplo, we're almost there. We do now have the large city, so we're gaining, should start gaining five a month, starting next month. You guys. back and how close are these guys to firing 90% we are not gonna lower maintenance quite yet this would if I repaid this loan now it would um, cost 129 so it'd bring us down to five ducats and we would end up just taking another loan out in two months I could repay this one but I'm gonna just all I'm gonna wait to repay either of them until this uh, rebellion fires. I am paying for this administrative guy right now, but I think I kind of need him. I also need to be rooting out corruption more than I am. Did you guys not get the memo? Then the truce with these guys ends in 1464. So in five years, I can go to war with them to take their last two provinces. Mongolia is still a subject of Oirat. They did not end up as a tributary of Ming. They went to war with that, but they probably just, looks like Ming just took these territories from Mongolia. Um, so, I mean, next, next targets are either Oirat and Mongolia or Korea again in... 1468. Kind of just depends on when my horde unity gets low. How big is this rebellion going to be? 8k? There are 1,000 Korchan separatists out here. Just chilling. Then 16,000 Barat separatists. They are ticking up. Gonna fire in 3.4 years. And my tr my mission currently is this, which I'm not going to be able to achieve for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it. And you guys are supposed to be protecting trade. We're gonna keep protecting trade in Girin for now. Um, Beijing is much more valuable, but I've only got one province in the Beijing trade node, so I don't see how that really helps me. I mean, I guess I could protect trade and hope I get more more from collecting, but um, yeah. Courts and separatists have crossed our borders. They wanted admin. I gave it to them. Um. Give me like four of these guys. Go deal with that. What's the devastation in this province at? 16%, so it doesn't really matter if it gets more devastated. That's one thing hordes are going to have to deal with in this new patch is just everywhere you go, you're going to bring a lot of devastation with you. So you're either going to have to just deal with the devastation or build forts. Um, grant export licenses. When the crown could not could not or would not pay cash to the nobles, they would instead grant them privileges to collect special revenues from which they could make a healthy profit. Grant privileges. Korea's opinion to Manchu increases. We lose 10 horde unity. Um, we get tax income boost until for 20 years. That seems really good. Like 10 horde unity, losing that isn't great, but um, everything else seems good. Especially that extra national taxes for 20 years. Yes, please. Let's continue trying to develop the Renaissance. One more click should be able to get, that, get us there. And there's 40 of each, uh, 40 of each um, monarch point, so that's great. I wonder why Ming is having so many problems with rebels. 
I don't know if it's um, I don't know if it's like the mandate stuff or if they're like low on stability right now or what uh, we had this pro this event happen just a second ago you either lose one stab or lose 30 ducats we're gonna pay the ducats in a heartbeat there's that rebellion go deal with that I probably should have had these troops standing there but whatever easy peasy that's taken care of Cancel. Can I not? Oh, wait a day. There we go. Split those guys, and then let's lower our army maintenance. Even lowered that low, I'm still losing losing money, huh? It'll help once I get all these cores finished. Um, so this is part of what I'm talking about with the horde, and like. You just have to find ways to make money, uh, otherwise you're gonna go bankrupt. You either keep you either keep conquering for eternity, or you hope your economy finds some way to recover. Um, let's go ahead and spend the military power again. That will get a, the Renaissance present here, and it will start spreading. We can now revoke this edict. How do we get rid of this edict? Maybe you can't? Maybe once you have an edict on, it's always on? Do we just change it to institution spread? Oh, no edict. That would make sense literally just a big old button down there. Uh, convert a place to Tengri or recover negative stability. You get five, five prestige for doing that. What about that? Five prestige. Right like that. Push of a button. Um, we're going to give these guys another one of these 111 provinces out here. There we go. And then we'll say we'll convert them to Tengri, this one. We have to finish our core first. And eventually, I want to be able to get enough uh, points to take Admin Tech 5 so we can start doing ideas. Yeah, you can have seven Admin points. So this should be taking up at five per month now. We're halfway to one of these, which is awesome. When does this start? Probably in the 1500s somewhere. I don't know which one of these we're gonna take. Possibly improved war taxes, it seems really good. Or justified wars. I don't think we really need the cavalry armies. Um, we don't have the money to support that kind of... We don't have the money to support 90% cavalry at this point. So this seems really good. There could be like an interesting build um, where you go... You go one of these tribes, one of the Tengri tribes. You stay with no syncretic faith to get the 20% regiment costs down. And then you take... You take that. So like when you're at war, you're having... You have 40% less... 40% cheaper troops. I mean, that seems really, really good. And then you take, uh, you go aristocratic ideas for minus 10% cavalry cost here and extra cavalry combat ability. And then you also go espionage ideas for the uh, plus 20% cavalry combat um, ability. Uh, um, not edicts. Other word. Policy, and have like super strong cavalry that are super cheap. That there could be there could be a strat in there.
do I want to kick you out? I, th I think I need to keep I need to keep my admin points ticking up. In three years, I can refocus this on admin. I should probably moth all this fort though. I don't love that this this screen is defaulting to here. I think I want it to default to here still, just because that's what I'm more used to, probably. But um, no edict. There we go. So we're not paying as much for that. Get all those done. I can make one more state. I think. Yes. So, which one is the lucky province? States and territories. Development. West Hilogland. Or Eastern Mongolia. They're both at 13 development. Let me see. This is all owned by me? Yes. What about Eastern Mongolia? It is not. There's still more territories. Still two more territories over here. Owned by China. Um, granted. But they at least have... There's more upside to doing this one. You want more land. There's another 111. My mission is to, con is to convert this territory, which is a ways. We'll give me plus one missionary strength. I don't even know if I can afford it. I'm barely making money. I'm not even making money as it is. I can definitely stop rooting out corruption so much, though. Let's have it where it's barely taking down. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to afford it for now. Missionaries, that is. So let's go ahead and cancel that mission, unfortunately. Lose one stab or 20 horde unity. Uh... Urban dwellers had always existed under a different code of rules than their rural brethren, even in the same state. Just as monarchs looked to curb the privileges of nobles, they often tried to bring cities under more uniform rules and regulations. The cities often resisted these efforts. We'll lose the 20 horde unity, which means we'll basically need to go to war in the next episode. Um, so, we're going to call it an episode right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. You've been wonderful. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. Tell me about what you think the shape of my country looks like. To me, I kind of see like uh, a one-footed rabbit. Ma maybe more of a mouse, like you got the two mouse ears and a nose. But he has no front legs, just hind legs. He's like a little kangaroo rabbit. A kangaroo kanga mouse, even. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.